welcome. I'm not even trying to sound happy because it is not a happy occasion. This time I will be talking about pretty serious stuff. I won't be recapping what happened in detail because this video is more focused on the response of the community and Hoyoverse rather than the accusations themselves, but still I have to mention some things, I can't go around that. You have the potentially disturbing topics on the screen now and if you don't feel comfortable watching this one, it's very much understandable. For those who decided to stay, let's do a really brief recap, in case you tend to be out of the loop like me. Genshin Impact's voice actor named Elliot Gindi, who plays Tinari in the English dub, has been accused of a lot of things. Both illegal, like SH of minors, and also just immoral behaviors, like abusing the trust of his fans and psychological manipulation. He actually did admit to most of it, but legally speaking it is still alleged as of now and I will be using the A word a lot because, well, I don't wish to get my ass sued. If you want to know everything about this case, I will leave a link in the description to a Twitter account that has all of this covered and if there's some new information, you will most likely find it there. There's a whole Google Doc out there, but Google keeps removing it, by the way, because of TOS violation, which is kind of ironic if you think about it, and a whole other problem in of itself. Anyway, if you want to find all of the evidence, you will. Although, I do not recommend going through it, especially if you yourself are a victim of similar abuse. It's not an exaggeration when people say it's really disgusting, because it is. Alright, I'll start with a quick response to the argument of But they lied about their age. It is a bullshit argument, thank you. Next topic, I mean, but no, seriously, you don't have to be an adult nor be famous to imagine a scenario in which you talk to someone you don't know on the internet. We all do this sometimes, right? <laughs> now, imagine you have fans. Those fans will be looking up to you, obviously. Some may even have a crush on you. And it's not something new, this has always been the case, like your grandma was kissing James Dean's picture in a newspaper. Times have changed and now you are in your celebrity crush's discord server, their live chat or their DMs. All of those are much more dangerous because now you don't have to go to Hollywood and stalk James Dean to talk to him. Now you can much more easily be taken advantage of or take advantage of someone. And as a 24 year old, there is no way you don't realize that. It's not like he's an 80 year old grandpa with dementia using the internet for the first time. Dude, if you are in any way influential, and especially if your audience may be considered young in general, you just have to confirm their age. It should be like washing your hands before you start cooking, and that's only if you choose to even engage in romantic activities with a member of your audience who um, has a parasocial relationship with you and there's clearly a power dynamic. Hey, hi, hello, it's editing me and I just wanted to add that although a lot of research has been done on parasocial relationships, there's barely any about romantic relationships with quote-unquote celebrities of any kind with their fans. I guess it's because it's not that common, so it's hard to study that in general. Like. Most famous people just date other famous people. <laughs> and also influencers, the modern celebrities, are a new thing as well. So we kind of don't even know what challenges couples like that may face, even when they are both adults. So the next part is a bit speculative, based on my own experience and my own parasocial relationships, because they're like VPN ads. Barely any internet users are free of them. <laughs> Okay, that's it, over and out. Now, I don't think it's inherently wrong to flirt with your audience. Streamers will jokingly flirt with chat all the time, but that's kind of anonymous. And I don't find anything wrong with that, except the fact that someone might take it too seriously, but that's the case with every joke, every interaction, even saying how are you to someone. They may feel you are closer than you actually are. Flirting with someone in DMs though is a little bit tricky, and by little bit I mean a lot, but I don't think it's always wrong either. Play at Sheeran. So yeah, 
Mia as dear old Ed used to sing, I believe it's possible. For two consenting adults! The content creator must be careful to not take advantage of the other person, that person must know what they're getting into, and both of them must be self-aware enough to navigate this complicated dynamic. I think it goes without saying that it definitely wasn't the case here, like, none of the above were true. By the way, apparently some people think asking for an ID is weird and quote-unquote kills the mood. Wow, maybe asking for consent in general is not romantic enough? I won't even get into that. You're not stupid, it's obvious how I feel about it. To sum it up, even if someone lied about their age, although from what I've seen it seems like here those teens were talking about it, slash had it in their bio, it's still the adult's fault for not confirming it. The adult is supposed to be the responsible one. That's it, there's no arguing this one. So that's the situation we have. If the evidence is true, and he confirmed at least screenshots to be true, Tinari's English VA has been grooming his fans as young as 14, dirty talking with them, asking for you know what kind of pictures, getting naked in front of them, like, what the Insolent. fuck? What's even worse, it seems a lot of victims have been struggling mentally and this man knew it. Like, if just a simple fact of abusing your position of power wasn't enough. And still, with all of that, some parts of the community decide it's those teenagers' fault. What's wrong with you? I'm not censoring this, they wrote this publicly. Yo, editing me again. Before recording, I took a lot of screenshots of the comments that were the main reason this video exists actually, <laughs> and I was slightly pissed at the time, but now I decided to censor them in the end. After all, some of the authors may be 12 year olds for all I know, and I don't want to bully any individual in particular. Just wanted to show you there's a lot of people like that in this community. I also thought I'd spare forcing you to read all of them, so I will just show them in speedy mode and you can pause the video and read how many you want, if at all. By the way, they all come from two, only two, posts from two different biggest Genshin related groups on Facebook. I considered going to other platforms, but one, fuck like that, I had enough, uh, two, there's zero doubt in my mind that I can find similar comments anywhere else. There's a reason I don't have Twitter after all. So it's up to you whether you want to actively go looking. Over and out. And yes, I am myself constantly saying alleged. You don't have to take anyone's word for a fact. You don't even have to believe anyone. But if you think there's no evidence, Wait for it. That's true, some percentage of allegations turn out to be false. It's not very high. I'm saying alleged because I have to, but if you look at it at face value, this case is pretty strong. There are multiple people speaking about it, showing screenshots who the alleged abuser confirmed to be true. Also, let's not forget that victims have a lot to lose coming forward. Comments like this prove that their fear is real, unfortunately. Hell, even that Elliot guy said in his DMs that they have as much to lose as me if it gets out. And sadly, he is right, because unfortunately that's a problem on a societal level, not on an individual one. Remember, in this case especially, we're not only talking victims, we're talking victims who are minors. Personally, I choose to believe victims with caution. It sucks, but I agree, humanity can be pretty shit and there's always a possibility that someone is lying. But even if the accusations are false, you trying to undermine the victim's word or harassing them won't do anything good. They would have done it for some reason. And that reason is to be figured out by law enforcement and potentially this person's psychologist or psychiatrist. However, if the allegations are true, you can do tremendous harm to the victims that can go as far as even driving them into ending themselves. If you are unsure, just don't contact them at all. And yeah, I'm not only talking about Elliot's case here, I'm talking in general with all cases like that.
Let's talk a bit about harassing the abuser too, because that's also important. The VA admitted to, it seems, most of the accusations. Still, there hasn't been a trial, and even when guilty, I don't think harassing him or straight up violence towards him is right. Yes, things he allegedly did are horrible, and if they are true, he should not only do time, but also actually get cancelled. And I don't like cancel culture, but if there's ever a situation I would consider banishing someone from public space, it's cases like this. And I don't mean banning him from social media so he can't speak or something like that, I just mean not hosting him in a public space, like not hiring him as a voice actor. Or as an actor in general, I hope you know what I mean. Anyway, I believe we can judge someone's actions as awful and still see them as human, even if they are a bad person. I don't believe in mob justice, I also don't believe in telling someone to Roblox oof themselves, ever, even if they are, in your eyes, evil. And just to be clear, no, I am not defending the guy. I'm almost certain he's guilty, but that's just my opinion, alleged and everything. I also don't mean don't criticize the guy. I am constantly critiquing him in this video. What I deem as unnecessary are things mentioned in the comments that I can't show you because I am afraid of YouTube taking this video down. But basically it comes down to people telling that VA to Roblox of himself or just describing their creative ways of what they would do to him if they met him. Another layer to this is I just see hyper-focusing on a potential abuser as redundant. What's good in putting your energy into hating him? In my opinion, it's better to focus on the victims. Give them your attention, because even a single I'm with you from a stranger goes a long way, and if they ask for help, try to deliver on that if you can. So, I titled this point in my script memes and tinari lovers and i already cringe inside so this section is going to be short there's a fine line between reality and the game universe i mean for most of us it's not that fine but ironically it's unreal how some people don't see that line at all like some people are more concerned about tinari than about the victims tinari who is a set of pixels and I get that it sucks if you are used to a voice in the game and that voice will now be potentially changed, but seriously? Your personal comfort here is more important than the serious trauma of other people? And you'd rather keep the VA even if he's proven guilty because you like his voice? It, it, bruh. <laughs> That's like witnessing a fatal car crash or something and being pissed because it made you late for school. And I say school, not work, because I choose to believe that these are mostly young people. I really hope so, at least. Some people are so out of it that for them the VA and the character just kind of merge into one. I think this state of thinking, state of mind, it's not something that we should inherently deem wrong because probably it's very possible that it's just a symptom of mental disorders or just troubled mind in general. This seems to have been the case with some of Elliot's alleged victims who projected their affection towards Tinari onto his VA and clearly is the case with some other people too who are now shocked because I can't believe Tinari did that. Well, he didn't. He doesn't exist. Now, as I said, let's not blame people for being detached from reality because it's probably a symptom of something more serious, but we can still disapprove of their actions. An example of this is what I said earlier, excusing the VA because you like the character, or trying to protect Tinari, quote unquote, by discrediting the victims. This kind of behavior should be criticized. One other thing I don't think is right, memes that make fun of victims or downplay the situation. Even if you could argue the intent is less malicious, I think memes like that endorse victim blaming and I already talked about why that's wrong. By the way, special shout outs to all those people who don't care so much that they have to announce it. Look at them telling us they don't care about other people's suffering at all. They're so edgy, so cool. <laughs> Thank you.
And I think it goes without saying that if those accusations are true, Elliot should be removed from the game. As of now, Hoyoverse responded with corporate talk. We deeply regret the harm and damage that happened to our fans, gamers, community, and anyone affected. Both our internal teams and external partners including our voice acting studio have been working together on an urgent solution, and we will keep you posted on the progress. Which means, yeah, we are aware of a shitstorm we found ourselves in, we're going to deal with that. <laughs> we have to. Remember, corporations don't have feelings. Still, I don't doubt that particular employees are probably feeling sorry, especially those who, I don't know, were the ones who directly hired Elliot. I wish Hoyo to take a more definitive stance in the upcoming days, like, if we find the accusations to be true, the VA will be replaced. Straight message, please. Another thing I wanted to say is, I am pretty stunned that almost no one is talking about it, Unless YouTube's algorithm is really screwing me over, but I don't think it's the case. I actively search for those videos. I mean, I get the only positive vibes on my channel attitude, or well, the fear of being sued, but I don't think avoiding the topic is the best approach. That's my belief though, and I am not dictating to other content creators what they should do. Some content creators spoke about it on Twitter or their streams, but I feel like topics like this deserve a video. Those will reach a wider audience and I feel people need to be aware of what happened so they don't get misinformed. Additionally, and I say it from my own experience because I was groomed by my teacher and also experienced SH multiple times, which sadly is not unusual. When someone you enjoy watching talks about these matters, you just feel better. It does take time, sometimes even years, to realize that something wasn't your fault. Even after you've worked through it in therapy or by yourself, hearing it from another person with an audience still matters. It's helpful. That's the main reason I think content creators should talk about serious matters such as this one. Their reach gives them a huge opportunity to help many people with just a couple of sentences. And I get that they are afraid, they are not equipped to talk about it, but from my experience, as long as you are being sensitive and have a bit of empathy so you won't victim blame or something like that, for me it's enough. Now, I don't know how the law works in the US, I feel like if minors are involved, the case must enter the court by default. In that case, pun unintended. I hope the victims will get the support they need to get them through the trial and if the law works the other way, it's up to them. Of course, as an individual, I would like the perpetrator to be punished, but it's their decision. Lawsuits are terrible after all, even if you are very likely to win. Either way, I'll respect their decision. I am, after all, keeping in mind the fact that he basically admitted to being guilty, so I'm assuming he probably is. And the losses would just change the alleged thing and hopefully give the victim some closure. Although, obviously, it won't suddenly make things right for them. I am realizing that I didn't talk much about stuff like psychological manipulation, aka threatening to Roblox oof yourself, or I didn't talk about transphobia. As for the first one, for once Texon has covered it pretty well. I have also experienced this one and it is scummy behavior for sure, making other persons scared of doing what they feel is right, like in this case, exposing Elliot. As for transphobia, I didn't cover this one because Elliot says this isn't true and there's not as much evidence for it so I'm kind of scared of going into that for legal reasons. I think I can safely say that even if he didn't mean to be transphobic on purpose, he clearly wasn't attentive enough to trans people and disrespected them. Being selfish and not thinking about other people's needs tends to be a, a little bit of a common trope here. Alright, I think I've said most of what I wanted to say. Thank you for listening and if you want, please do share your thoughts in the comments. There aren't many, so I read a lot of them. <laughs> I may record a follow-up video if we get new information, and if not, it will be in the pinned comment. I'm hoping for a legal case and jail time, but at this point nobody knows what's going to happen and I am not holding my breath.
if you're a victim of SH or any abuse in general and you feel like you can't do anything, don't be afraid to reach out for help. I don't know about resources available in your country, but there's always a way. If you don't have friends, there are Facebook groups or Discord servers and I'm sure you will find someone. Take care guys. Bye.